All right. Welcome to our first ever class of great players of the past. Although it's actually our sixth class, it's the first one on that topic. And as you can see, the subject of the uh, lecture is Akiba Rubinstein, one of your favorite Rubinsteins, right? Yeah. If, if you play the piano, then he's your second favorite, right? No, nothing. Okay, and Rubinstein is considered by many people to be one of the five greatest players of all time who did not become world champion. And I'm going to show you three games today. One is his most famous game, which I'm sure you've all memorized before the class. And the other two were against two world champions, just to show you who the boss is. Okay, not me. So Rubenstein was born in 1880 and died in 1961. And he was a, a Polish grandmaster. Some think he was the best player never to become world champion. I'm not one of those people. And you'll notice that under died, he died in Belgium. And actually, that's very important for this lecture. Does anybody know why? Yes, no? he died. Well, that's, you just repeated what I said. Always repeat, so he's right. It was very important. Yeah, well, some of you know, like Dave probably knows, you three have a chance of knowing, I used to live in Belgium. I lived in Belgium for four years, and my son was born in Belgium. My son's a chess master. And uh, I know his son, uh, Sammy Rubenstein. Sammy Rubenstein was about 2,000 rated, and I talked to him on more than one occasion. Wow, wow. Yeah, so I, I talked to his son several times. Now, his son was no spring chicken when I talked to him, and that was 30 years ago. So if he's alive now, he's at least 100, but I'm guessing probably not. But he's a chess player. Um, you know, unfortunately, Rubenstein didn't um, die in the most wealthy fashion. Okay, and he beat a lot of world champions. And I always tell my students, if you want to see how good somebody was at chess, go to their Wikipedia article and see how long it is. See? So you, you would guess that like Mor that Morphy and Kasparov and Carlson they have really long Wikipedia articles, and mine is like this. That's my Wikipedia. You can't. There's there's nothing to move up and down. And I don't have one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> These other kids do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they talk about notable chess games and references and you know legacy and so forth, mainly and so forth. Okay, and then there's the games of Akiba Rubinstein. So see, this is him with a mustache, and then this is him without a mustache. A little bit older. You get to decide, you know, which you prefer. Okay, and then they have notable games here in tournaments, game collections. They have a little biography. This is ChessGames.com. Then there was an article written by Edward Winter. He likes to write articles about things that happened before you were born, you know, chess-wise. So he wrote an article, and he quotes a lot of grandmasters. And they have newspaper articles from a long time ago and old pictures. So that's nice. Chess.com had an article written, and I was shocked at who wrote it. Julio Becerra, the Whoa. grandmaster who lives in Florida. And he was like, Akiba Rubenstein. He's, I'm like, what? Julio Becerra thinks Rubenstein's the greatest. Then he shows games and so forth. So that was nice. And then top players in history, number six, Akiba Rubenstein. Showed you. Okay, so Rubenstein's pretty good. Now, as you all know, about five or six years ago, don't ask me, I'm the lecturer, there was a very famous game played at Tata Steel. Tata Steel is in which country or city? I'll accept either one. That's, you, you, you named a city, that was good. Dubai? Well, you named a city further away. Amsterdam. Amsterdam is clo close the enough. Close enough. The Netherlands, right. And they play in Vikonze, your favorite seaside resort. And every year they have a tournament there with lots and lots and lots of grandmasters. And they used to have three groups, then they had two groups. Now I don't know, they changed their mind a lot. And I used to play in the second group, and then I would get 50% if I was lucky, and I usually wasn't lucky. Anyway, the reason I'm telling you all that nonsense, why was I telling them all that nonsense? Oh yeah, there was a game played uh, about five years ago in the top group between Aronian and Anand. And Anand sacrificed all of his pieces and won with black in 23 moves. This is a very well-known game. And when the game ended, I was coincidentally, it was a coincidence, I was doing a live commentary with Danny Wrench for chess.com. And Danny Wrench is like, wow, this game's great, and you know, this is the greatest, and he was right. And I said, I'll tell you what, Danny, I'll try to get Anand on Skype and we can interview him. 
And he said, if you get Anand on Skype, you get a raise. Five minutes later, Anand was talking to us on Skype about the game. And like, Danny Rich couldn't believe it. He was like, what? So Anand like, did interviews, went to his hotel room, and I said, yo, dude, let's Skype. And he's like, all right. So, yeah. And he was like, yo, dude, can't talk to me like that. Just be. Anyway, why am I telling you that? Good question. Because the first game I'm going to show you, well, where's the first game? Here it is. Is a game that Anand mentioned, if you can believe that, after his game with Aronian. He said, oh, yeah, my game with Aronian was like Rotwelly Rubenstein. And I know it when was you a stem game. Yeah, and I know when you guys play chess and your games are really like this reminds me of a famous game from a hundred years ago. You guys are doing that all day, right? Especially Ocean. You know why? He's an ocean of knowledge. Yeah. That was just one joke I'm gonna tell. That was a drop in the bucket. Okay, now you may notice White didn't play perfectly this game. And you'll also notice you never heard of White. Those sort of go together. So whenever you see a game Morphe versus Doofus, you're like, wait, who's that guy? Then that's, if they played better, you would have heard of him. Okay. But they're so, just good enough to be yeah, playing the strong That's player. right. Yeah, he's a, a guy, guy like that, me. Yeah, he's a guy you expect. <laughs> so this is sort of a boring symmetrical opening. If you don't know what symmetrical means, now you do. It's a sale of them shows. What, Tarash? Yeah. yeah. But what happened was, somehow White lost some Tempe. Nobody knows how. Maybe he moved to Arizona. No, then he would have a Tempe. The kids are confused, right? No. Do you see a phoenix rising? Maybe. You got nothing? All right, good job. Okay, queen d2. I've lectured on this game before, and no matter how many times I lecture on this game, I don't understand queen d2. I mean, if I had to guess, if I had to, I would say white was considering castling queenside. <laughs> but you don't you don't play a3, b4, c4, the guess, well you do, but you lose. Now it could have been, he didn't want to move his bishop because he thought black would take and he wanted to take in one move, so he was just like developing and hoping that he would not lose the tempo. Queen e7, and then he played bishop d3, so that was the end of that idea. Okay. All right. b5, okay, bishop. So this is still looking pretty symmetrical, right? Except now, White played queen e2, so white lost the tempo. And you're like, well, that's okay, he's white, so that's not a big deal. Bishop b7, castles. So now, through, this is magic. You guys know what magic is? So this is the exact same position, except black played rook d8, and it's black's move. So black's two tempi up. So if black played here, that would be the same position, you see what I'm saying? So you're like, wait a minute, if white lost one tempo, how did he lose two tempi? And the answer was, earlier in the game, when you weren't paying attention, white played dc and black took with the bishop. Straight ahead. Right, and then in this game, white moved the bishop and then took on c4. So white actually lost two tempi, that's why you never heard of him. Now, if you ask an engine, the engine is going to say, I don't speak English, why are you talking to me? But the engine would say this is about equal, even though black's up to tempi, it's not a big deal. Okay, knight e5, black seizes the initiative. Now, obviously there's the famous Aronian Anand game, which I've also lectured on. But this reminds me of another Anand game. Anand likes to win with black the same way. Now you all remember the last game of the world championship match between Topolov and Anand. And with one game to go, the score was tied. Right? This was about eight years ago, nine years ago, something like that. And Topolov was white. And word on the street was Topolov knew if he drew the game, they would go into a playoffs, which would be quick chess. And Topolov said, I don't want to play quick chess with Anand. Because Anand used to be good at quick chess. Now <laughs> Anand's old. Although Anand's still pretty good at quick chess, but not like the old Anand, which was the young Anand. And the new Anand is the, is the old Anand. Are you keeping notes? Okay. So Anand, in that game, it was a uh, Lasker defense in the Queen's Gambit. And Anand had this bishop, and that bishop did a good job. That bishop destroyed Topolov, and he won the game, he won the match. And in the game 
that I referred to earlier, Aroni and Anand, Anand had those bishops. And then when Anand won that game, he's like, oh, it was like this game. So if you want to be the five-time world champion, you should memorize at least 100 years of chess games. At least. Because this is more than 100 years. You know what I mean? Okay. The way I see it? Yeah. The first one to get a knight on the e-file here. Mm -hmm. White lost the tip of White could have... Even with the work on d8, if White could have gone right. knight to e4 Even first, then he... Right, because now my bishop is open and yours is not. And it doesn't seem like it's going to get right. open. And if I'm going to meet you, which is the way you win at chess, then this knight's better for meeting you than this knight. Yes. That knight's good for blocking your bishop. It's doing a good job. And I think that, maybe I'm wrong here, I think that White needs to play knight takes. He did. Yeah, he did. That's why you're the same strength as Rawell. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> then he played f4, which is a very aggressive move, but he was worried about the bishops. And in fact, Rawell he played very aggressively. Okay. This ain't Luke von Whaley. This is George Rawell. So he moved his bishop back, and then e4, which makes sense if you're going to play f4. Now White's trying to seize the initiative. The problem is when you move pawns to seize the initiative. Your pawns can't go backwards, and you open up your king, and you open up diagonals to your king, and you weaken certain squares. In this case, dark squares, because your king's on a dark square, and there's nothing defending this diagonal. Now, if Rotwelly had known the game, Aronian and Anon, he might have been scared. But obviously, since that game wouldn't be played for you know, 104 years, he wasn't worried. Right? Good reason. I didn't have the time to yeah, they're play confused. the machine. Yeah. Okay, so he played rook c8. And this is why I yell at my students all the time. My students would never play rook c8 because that makes the rook better. They're like, no, no, I'm going to attack him. I'll leave my rook on a8 the whole game. And then I'm like, don't you want to use the rook? And they're like, no. See, once again, right, the, the grandmaster always gets his pieces developed first. Yep. For instance, me, I'm looking at bishop b6 check mm -hmm. and then h5 Five to try to get knight g4. Yeah, that's right. I'm trying to do that already and I'm forgetting about the rook on a. Right. And Paul Morphy taught us using all your pieces is a good idea. And, and people knew who Morphy was back then. We forgot now. So, so we should be one. disciplined in making sure everybody gets in the game before we launch our yeah. assault. Now, now we have good rooks. Yay, everybody's good. I wonder if we'll use that rook later. <laughs> and then we'll just out. be patient. So e5, the point of e4, gaining more space, making this bishop better, the Anand bishop I like to call it. Bishop b6, check. Even you guys know what white did. Right? They block know, they're just... The what's, yeah, block with the queen, but you didn't say which, <laughs> you didn't say which square. Dead. Aha, see, that's why, that's why you lost yesterday. So now these two bishops... Because you don't know what square he, he blocked on. See, that's why you could get better chess. Okay, no, he, th he's not as good as you. He played King H1. Yeah. Okay, then Knight G4. Now, this queen, like me, is overworked. It's defending G4, it's defending the bishop. Now again, I have these discussions with my students all the time. And I'm like, when somebody is attacking your piece and you're defending it, that's good for the attacker. Let's try not to have that situation. Of all of these pieces, white's not attacking them, but black is attacking a lot of white's things. So now, of course, black wants to play queen h4, and Dave Vest is happy. See how happy he is? Okay. Now Dave is looking at bishop h7, I assume. That was my assumption. However, that seems pretty risky, because when I take it and you take my knight, rook d2 seems pretty annoying. Ooh. Very annoying. It does, doesn't Really it? annoying. See, and those then, bishops, those are bishops. And there's no check to try to win that rook. Right. Now, anything. we stand on the shoulders of giants. That's actually how I change the light bulbs. <laughs> yeah, he, he got that one. It's the first joke he got in like a year. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, Grandmaster, what I'm seeing here is is that E5 move yeah. has opened it up way too much. I don't really but that's, that's why you never heard of him. No. Okay, I don't so like that. Black is using Polite. all of his pieces to attack, right? He's got every he's got everything. He's got timing, touch. It's like the movie The Hustler, but it was, you know, you guys never heard of it, except for Dave. Okay, and then you got this going on. So who was in the hustler? Anybody? Paul Newman. Paul Newman, keep going. Jackie Gleason. Keep going. Carl Malden. No. What Carl Malden? No. The hustler, that was that pool. Yeah. Right, keep Fine going. Pool. You can do it. <sighs> uh 
No? You, you didn't get Piper Laurie? Nothing? Well. Yeah. George C. Scott? Is that who you think Carl Warren That's what I was thinking about. Also, Jake LaMotta played, 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 played a bartender, mm, which right. is unusual. And there were two other famous people, but they were sort of not famous where the kids were. Well, they never heard so. anybody mention. So. Okay. <laughs> By the way, Jack, at least it was pretty good pool play. He did his own shots. Yep. Yeah, Paul Newman, they had William Moscone in there. All right. So knight g4, and he played bishop e4. Now, this is a good lesson for you youngins and you oldins. Okay? When somebody's mating you, if you trade all the pieces off, they won't mate you because there are no pieces. So White was like, man, this bishop's looking pretty good, and this bishop's looking pretty attacked. So let's trade everything off. Okay? And Black's <laughs> like, I'll trade bishops, but first I'm going to checkmate you. And then White called the director and said, my opponent's talking during the game. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So obviously he's threatening mate, frankly. And he played g3. But let's analyze h3 because that's fun. <laughs> h3 looks like fun, right? Now, you'll notice this is defending this because I said so. So the grandmaster says rook takes c3. And then, man, if I play rook takes h3, that's pretty good attack. So, so he has to take bishop. Bishop takes c3. Bishop takes e4. Queen takes e4. Queen G3, uh, threatening mate, and if you take my knight, I retreat with mate. Always retreat with mate. That, that one saying? there, that's a common thing. You yeah. see that would show up a bunch. And if you take the knight, like this way, yeah, then I win, but I forgot how. Probably I take and play rook D3. Yeah, take, take, rook D3, threatening mate, which you all saw. Yeah. That's because that they didn't the see it. And also threatening this. So, yeah, but if you stop me and I take this, I have two bishops for a rook. And my, my phone says two bishops is better than a rook. Yeah. Two bishops is a lot better than a rook. If only you knew. When you're higher, you'd be like, wow, that guy was right. Yeah. Okay, then they, they actually give this. Wow. Okay. okay. So, instead of playing h3, he played g3. Ooh. Okay, attacking the queen. Now black moved his queen. Psych. Yeah. Now, what's more important than the queen? Let's see how good the audience is here. Checkmate. Checkmate. Okay. So, black played rook takes c3, which is sort of the same as the last rook takes c3. We're playing for checkmate. Now, it's pretty obvious. I think he took the queen. Yeah. If you take this, the rook, I play bishop takes check, and once again, you're overworked over here. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you got, you got every, black's got everything over here. With so many arrows, you know he's lost. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then me. Yeah, that's not as funny as you thought it was. Okay, and they also give bishop takes b7, because there's a lot of pieces you can take. Rook takes g3, and in a shock to the system, not only is black attacking, black's up material. So that's not good. Okay, so after they took a queen, take a queen, right? Okay, now this move, I mean, a lot of moves made the game famous. Famous game. Yeah, Do you, does anybody, if you know the game, you might remember this move. It's probably a move you wouldn't consider. That's why the game's famous. Now, if I can get mad at everybody who ever lived for a minute, then we'll go back to our lecture. A lot of people today have a, it's called like the recent, it's called something. It's in every sport. It's everywhere. Everybody now has been at everybody a long time ago. That's what everybody thinks. Carlson's the best. Uh, LeBron James is the best. I know the uh, I'm going to play. Everybody's the best now, and 80 years ago they were no good. That's what everybody says. Oh yeah, Carlson's great, Kasparov's great, everybody else no good. Okay, if you look at Morphy's best games, Rubenstein's best games, Lasker's best games, Capablanca's best games, those guys were good. So if you don't believe that, too bad. Go, go watch something else. So this is the big mystery move right here. Yeah, you, you got it? I believe I did. It's a deflection. Man, the oh, highest rated player in the room is always right. A yeah. deflection move. Anybody yeah. see a deflection move? I see two. What? What is it? I'm looking at rook c2 and rook e3. You're like, you know, you're you're you're, you're surrounding the right move. I like that. Yeah. You're surrounding. What you got? You're doing a good job. Ocean. Oh, rook e3. Now rook e3. The rooks defended twice. Then nobody would care. What you, you got, Ron? Move and go like, wow. Then I can show you the game. You'd be like, wow. Oh. You. Detail. Bam! That's wow. what I wanted to do. I believe him. He always awesome. says that after the fact. Okay, right. yeah. now okay. the threat yeah. is rook takes queen. 
I was trying to help the audience there. Now, the, also we have a fork. Okay. Now, if when you when you say all the pieces are attacking, see, I wasn't kidding. You thought I was kidding. And when I said don't move pawns in front of your king, which I say every lecture, I wasn't kidding. See, he didn't move any pawns in front of his king, and he moved all the pawns in front of his king. Teach him. Okay. So, well, if I take your queen, then I'm threatening me. Also, I took your queen. <laughs> okay. So he took the rook. Makes sense. Right? Okay. And then he took check. Rook f3 is, is the horizon effect, so that's no good, right? So he played... Queen g2. Right, yeah. And now, again, taking pieces is good, but there's something better. Checkmate. Checkmate. So what did he do? He did rook, rook, a, rook h3. Rook h3, right. That threatens rook takes h2 mate. And there's a lot of defenses to that. I just don't see any. <laughs> and... And rook to c2, I think, would work, but it takes longer. Rook, rook c2, I'm sure, wins the game, but rook it h3, rook h3 he resigns. That one's quicker. Yeah. Yeah, it takes Because rook c2 longer. threatens to take the queen, which can be defended. But he, rook, yeah. Now I threaten rook h2, which can't be defended. So I think the only move to not allow meet in one is rook f3. Then I play bishop f3, and then I meet you in one. Uh. Oh, you could play bishop d4 and block my bishop. Then I would, you just keep giving all your pieces away. Rook f2. Yeah, then you could not get made in a one. So can we, can, so that's the end of it. Can we see it yeah. again? Yeah. All the way from the beginning? Yeah, just go through let's, it. Let's go, let's go let's to the watch important the chess part. Movie let's go to the important minute. part. Yeah. Yeah, this is where I think we should start. Yeah. And I think you're right. I think e5, no good. See, that, that attacks the black knight, forcing him to a better square. And I see you kids doing that all the time, even though I don't know you. Right, your bishop pretty dumb too. A lot of people attack things, then when they move them, they're like, oh, I didn't think he'd move it. Well, which is worse, e5 or f4? Well, I understand, f4 you could claim was a defensive move because that's annoying. But e4, e5 is an offensive right, idea, oh which, God, which made his position mm -hmm. worse. Right. Yeah. So I, now White should play defensively and trade all the pieces or maybe get his rook off of a1. To throw the rook yeah. over, on but the but C5 that's not good. Then we can't show the game in class. It takes it takes two to tango. You said that a lot, right? It's two you, rooks are used. If your opponent doesn't let you win brilliantly, then you win in a boring way. If they let you win brilliantly, you got to find the right moves to win. But I like the way Black used all of his pieces, and even rook c8 was key because he gets to play rook takes c3 later in all variations. Yeah, and this was... And, and don't you believe, because they had a lot of time to think about it, I believe that he saw a lot of this when he went rook to c8. Yeah. No, I, I think his rook takes c3 idea was, was in his was head. Was in his head when he went rook and to c8. And you're the king of exchange sacrifices. So you're, oh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, rook c3 and then rook d2. You guys do that all the time. I'm the king of exchange yeah. sacks in my own. Okay, game. now that game was okay. I have a feeling. That game was okay. But that guy, that guy is, who's, who's that guy? So let's look at some games where he beats some, some serious people. Now, when I was a kid, my dad really liked Rubenstein. My dad was a master, of course, and otherwise he wouldn't be a fine goal. <laughs> and um, so he liked Rubenstein a lot. Now, my dad liked the old masters. Okay, Rubenstein wasn't even old enough. He wanted to go back even further. Okay. But he liked Rubenstein, and he would always tell me this one move. He'd be like, that move is the greatest move. Not that game, some other games. And it turned out, I'm not sure what game he meant, because he played the same great move in two different games. Although I do know which move, but you don't know that. So first we'll look at Lasker. Okay? Some of you have even heard of Lasker. Some of you. Now, Emmanuel Lasker was world champion for over 25 years. He was okay, right? Good player. And uh, Rubinstein played Lasker in 1909. I would say... 1909, that's around his peak, yeah? Lasker. Yeah. Yeah, he was pretty good in 1909. And that's a famous yeah. tournament. Yeah, St. Right. Petersburg, yeah. Okay, so, because they like to play chess in Florida, and the, the kids didn't get it. Okay, uh -huh. so, all right, so he played the Tarash variation, so white's already better. Yeah, this is considered, but Lasker liked to mix it up. No symmetrical positions. I've had white in these positions a lot. I like having white. Now, when I'm white, I play as boring as possible, and in 90 moves I win this pawn, and another 90 moves you resign. But Rubenstein played a little more aggressively than I do. 
Bishop e5, actually threatening something. <laughs> okay, bishop d7, takes on f6, and wins the d-pawn. Bam! And Lasker resigned because he's down a pawn. No. Now, black has the two bishops, and this king is in the center. So that was a risky idea. Okay, but it worked out. Took the knight, takes back, queen g5. Uh-oh. Got a lot of threats going on here, right? Okay, now it's very tricky because if you check and take the rook, which all of you would do, then this bishop is hanging and that knight is trapped. And you can't castle because I took your bishop. Yeah? So very tricky. And when I'm white, I don't like very tricky. So I would have played bishop e2 and castle and never done any of this. I'm afraid. Okay, but that's why they don't lecture about me. You know, they, they lecture about not me. They're like, let's look not let's not look at his games. What's that? Queen e2. Bishop takes c6. Queen e2 also reasonable, but then you have to watch out for knight takes d4 later. The variation I look at is bishop takes c6. That's what he played. And then knight e3. I think that's what he did, but I, I could be wrong. Bishop c6, knight e3. You yeah. play like Rubenstein. Now if he goes bishop takes g2, I move my rook over. Yeah, and now I'm a pawn up. Hooray! Although it's isolated. Okay, and black castle. So black has great compensation for a pawn. I would think Dave Vest wants to have black here. This looks like you're kind of a pawn sacrifice. You've got nice queen, nice bishop, nice rook. I must admit, I would be Lasker-like. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, so he psychological. Yeah, rook e8. Now, the dice guy. when he played rook e8, obviously he's just developing his rook, but he also has a threat. Does anybody see it? You. Uh, queen takes e3 and, I mean... I mean, rook takes the and the queen. Yeah, the knight's defending the mate, Very good. and then he's going to remove the defender, and then he's going to mate you. Okay, so Rubenstein resigned, the attack is too strong. No, wait, that's not right. Okay. Rubenstein played rook c1, pinning the bishop. However, that variation you said still works, so he did it. Right? And then Rubenstein didn't see that, so he resigned. Now, what did Rubenstein actually do? He didn't take the rook. I know what he does. You. What does he do, Raj? Rook takes c6. Rook takes c6. Very good. Yeah. Now, now queen takes g2 as a mate. Well, they could still do it. Okay. Takes. And now, I don't know if it was this game or if it was the next one. So that gives you a hint if you guys can remember 15 minutes later. Rubenstein played a move, and my dad talked about this move for 50 years. <laughs> I'm serious. Right here. Yeah, so can you, can you guys do it? You, you, can you do it? Uh, you got to do it. Remember, these guys were no good, the old guys, only the new guys are good. F4? You know, guys are like, well, after F4, you're down a rook. I move my queen, you resign. Down, well, you I'm win. looking for fours and stuff. Yeah, but F4, I move my uh, queen. No, not you. You're too good. And then, you know, Magnus Carlsen, he's the best. All right. Now, for a prize, when's the last time Magnus Carlsen won a tournament? The answer is never. No, the answer has been 14 months ago. No, that's the greatest player who ever lived. <laughs> He wins a tournament every couple of years. That's great, right? So, Horrible. You know, the problem with this a lot of times is, is we just want to play an automatic move here. Yeah, you guys would play pawn takes rook. You wouldn't think a second. And that's what you wouldn't to. think a second. But then you wouldn't have my dad talk about your move for 50 years if you did that. So you better not do that. <laughs> Queen C1. There you go. Queen C1. Very good. See how he pinned the rook? Oh. And also Queen C6 check later just mm -hmm. in case. The Just double attack. Now, you guys are like, a uh, 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 Grandmaster Feingold, uh, doesn't Queen D2 do the same thing? No. Because the Queen on D2 is not defended. And you could go Rook E5 or Rook, rook E5 G3. or Rook G3, then you would resign. Well, that's a Rook G3, you could play your F4. Okay, so Queen oh. C1's better because my Queen's defended. So if you choose to do this, I could just take your Rook if I want. Plus, I got this action going on. That's the importance of queen c1. Okay, so rook takes d4. Everybody's taking everybody. Now, I'm threatening the rook. I'm threatening the c6 pawn, and I'm threatening the f7 pawn. That's why we're lecturing about him, and now you. Okay. Saves his rook, and goes into the pawn up endgame, which wasn't very exciting. Now here, this is a very important lesson for all of you. Unfortunately, Karen's in that room. If she was in this room, I could yell at her, but I can't now because she's in that room. So I tell all of my students and Karen, my, my wife, 
move your king up in the end game. And then their answer is no. And then they lose all their games, and then they don't know why. And then I'm like, I told you to move your king up in the ending, and they're like, no, not doing it. And I'm like, you're a good student. And none of that happened, except they don't move their king up in the end game. So most of you would not want to lose all of your pawns, right? So you would play rook f1, and they would go here, and you'd play rook f2, and they would go here, and then you'd start laughing. Then you could repeat moves forever. Or you could make your rook the worst rook ever. You could go here and then play rook b1, making sure your rook is inactive. Good job. And then win your e-pawn anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, so Rubenstein, one of my finest students, he's like, oh, you move your king up in the end game. That's right. Yeah. That's how you do it. And white's still a pawn up. And now white has a good rook and black has a bad rook and white has a good king. Look at, look at white. And also this rook a6 was an excellent move because now black can't move his king up. Yeah. So this rook dominates this rook, attack, defend, and the rook dominates the king, and in him a pawn up. I got everything, right? <clears throat> so the rest was easy. He just kept pushing his pawns and king forward. The truth hurts. Yeah. Then always repeat one of my rules. Yeah. Now this is very nice. This is fine gold, fine gold esque, except it was good. That was the difference. Okay. In this position. He played a3. Now that's a move I like. a3. You know why I like that? Because you can't. Eventual is Zugzwang. It, it is Zugzwang. Eventual, it's now. Yeah. So you can play rook c7. You guys know that. If you move your rook vertically, you lose your a pawn. You agree. If you move your rook, whoa. If you move your rook to d7, very suspicious. <laughs> okay. And if you move your rook to e7, I check you, and I check you again. Your, king, your king's supposed to go to e7 when I check you. you got nowhere to go. You can go hide on h7 and resign. Right? Or you could get mated. You guys, you, stop playing a5. You guys, you guys want to get mated because it's funny? How's, how's that look? I have a better idea. You could trade rooks. Ooh, that's a good ending for black. Right. Okay, so you can't play rook anywhere, you can't play anything anywhere. A3, now it's your move. And if you move your king, my king comes in. Right? You see what I'm saying? A3, Zugzwang. And they said those players couldn't play. A3 would be like my favorite move ever if I played it. Then my opponent would be there like, oh, it's my move, darn. Then they wouldn't know what to do. Also, he repeated before he did that. Now, I don't know if there was a time control, there was no chess clock. But I like the way he made move 40, then the guy resigned. Uh, then I like that. They didn't have time controls back then, did they? 1909? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then yeah, the world, the then the world changed now, and Alaska resigned. Now, my understanding, and again, I got it from like old sugar packets and cereal boxes, but my understanding is when chess clocks were first used, you didn't lose the game. You were fined. So if, you, if your time ran out, you had to pay. Yeah, I'm serious. You didn't lose the game. Now, you all play Scrabble. They all play Scrabble. And when I say Scrabble, I mean Scrabble tournaments. Now he's like, oh, I don't do that. You play Scrabble tournaments? No. In Scrabble tournaments, they use chess clocks. And then when your time runs out, what happens? Yes. No, but I like that. No. <laughs> you lose points. Every minute past your time, you, you, they take points away. Not, you don't lose the game, you, just lose, you could lose the game because you lose points. Yeah. And so, I'd like to think he made move 40 and he couldn't be fined anymore, so the guy resigned. No. So that was world champion, as you said, Emmanuel Lasker, and he got thoroughly beat that game. He got outplayed and beat. He didn't lose because he hung a rook. So here's the thing, sometimes world champion loses or top 10 player loses, and you're like, yeah, he, he was winning and he hung a rook in time trouble. Okay, yeah, then you're like, yeah, I wish I beat him by playing better than him. There he just got outplayed. And you lose, you lose. Now, as all of you know, and by all of you I mean Dave, and maybe one more, um, back in the day, I don't know what day it was, maybe Tuesday? Back in the day, FIDE didn't say, you, you're good, play the world champion a match. They didn't do that. The world champion said, I'm the world champion. I think I'll take a nap for 10 years. And then this guy's like, I want to play you. And he's like, how much money you got? That's how it worked, sort of like boxing today. So, so now, if you're the world champion, Magnus Carlsen, you play who they tell you to play, or you're not world champion anymore, right? If you're like, oh, I don't want to play him, Kramnik might beat me, then, you, then he's a world champion. 
Okay, so FIDE has these tournaments and matches, and you do what they say. Back in the day, the world champion did what you said, so what he said. He said, I'll, I'll, I think I'll take about five years off. I'll be the world champion for five years. Let's see, Ocean, I can beat Ocean. You want to play a match for the world championship? Yeah, yeah, I won. <laughs> right? So some of those matches were suspicious. You're playing guys you're going to beat for sure, because then you're world champions now. Right? Makes sense, right? Yeah. Okay, so the first few world champions, they were world champions for a long time, because they made sure they won, they played people they could beat, and then they didn't play that many, though. Nowadays, nobody's... When Botvik was the world champion, your favorite player, uh, he never won a match. He never won a match, and when his opponent was world champion, they never won a match. It's like six matches in a row, and then finally Petrosian and Botvik was old. So. But yeah, he played Tall, played Smyslav, played Bronstein, and the world champion never won those matches. They won the return matches. Okay, and last but not least, but least, Capablanca, my dad's favorite player ever. Okay, except he lost this game. Now, when did Capablanca become world champion? I'm going to say 1921. Yeah, everybody agrees? That's about right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So, Capablanca wasn't the world champion, but he was probably second to Lasker. Maybe he was better than Lasker. Hmm. 1911? Close. Okay, San Sebastian, another famous tournament. And when you guys play in tournaments, it's like round one, especially you. You're not even playing round two. This is round 13. Okay, this is like when they used to bare knuckle box. It was round 110. Now it's round five and they're tired, right? Those guys who fought last month, and they said, oh, that's unfair to the, that guy. He's only fought five round fights and it was round nine. When they fought 150 years ago, it was round 130. And then if you didn't die, you kept fighting. <laughs> like, well, you're alive, let's That's go. Right. Yeah, real, yeah. Right. Well, you think I'm kidding, but I ain't. He's not kidding. You're alive, go fight. Like, and like, uh, round 107, outside 90 degrees. Okay, we paid a nickel, go fight. Okay, nowadays, you know, you fight one round, I'm tired. Where's my equipment? Where's my manager? No. Okay, so this was round 13. They had some double round robins back in the day. They played 10, 20, 30 rounds, right? And then they, okay, you got 18 out of 20, you win. Now you get 6 out of 9 and you win. Like, ah, that's too many rounds. Okay, so Rubenstein's white against Capablanca. It's another one of these tar ashes. Looks like the Lasker game, right? You guys remember that. Well, even even yeah. the first game was the same game. Yeah, and this is, this is like the main line now. If you, play, if you look at Karpov Kasparov from the 80s and 90s, this is what you see. Okay, well, you don't see that. Yeah, that's for sure. So that moves very strange. It doesn't help Black Castle. It's not the most active square for the bishop. It doesn't lose, but grandmasters play these moves now. And this bishop stays here because they're not, they're not sure to with that bishop. Also, you can't castle and you can castle queenside. Lasker castle queenside because he lost. Okay, bishop g2, bishop e7, rook c8. He's delaying knight f6 as long as possible so white can't go there. White could go there, but probably he shouldn't. Because it loses a piece. Yeah. So by not playing here, and this reminds you of the Petrosian variation of the Queen's Gambit. That's what you were thinking, right? Yep. Was he telling the truth? Uh, yep, bishop on e2. Uh, e7. Usually you. Yeah. Usually so, you have the knight out. Yeah, so we'll go back and we'll try to see what we can do. Okay. So in the Queen, whoa. So in the Queen's Gambit, a very popular move is bishop e7. Get and you're like, aha, you can't play bishop. Well, you could play bishop g5. I don't recommend it. <laughs> and now, if you play knight f3, which I play, now you can never play the lines with knight e2 unless you cheat and move back to g1, which I wouldn't recommend it. So a lot of grandmasters play bishop f4 here, but if you play knight f6, they would definitely play bishop here, e3, and often they would play bishop d3, knight e2. Okay, but if you play bishop e7 first, then white has to make a move. So in this game, very similar. Kappa blank is like, I'm not playing knight f6, I'm going to chill, and then I'll play knight f6 when I feel like it. So this isn't really theory now. Even now I wouldn't know what to do. I'd resign, I guess. So he took on c5. Typical, when they move their bishop, then you make a move it again. That's fair, right? Okay. Bishop c5, knight g5. You never see knight g5 in this opening because nobody plays bishop e6 so early. But if the bishop's on e6, we can go take it. Now, again, you guys aren't grandmasters, and then when you get the title, you're all going to get it soon, then you'll be like, oh, two bishops. That's right. And 
it's funny, in round one of the World Cup, Magnus Carlsen was playing an African player who was about 22.50. And Magnus, first game was tough. Magnus was probably slightly worse, then equal, then slightly better, then clearly better than winning. Okay. But anyway, uh, Jun Ludwig Hammer, the second best player in Norway, he, put, he had a very funny tweet. Because in the game, immediately, Carlsen's opponent gave up the two bishops. And his position was fine. And Hammer said, ah, to be young again and not care about bishops. Yeah, because when you're grandmaster, you like bishops. When you're a kid, you like knights. Bug house, rawr, right? Yeah, kids like knights. They hop around. Yeah. So grandmasters like bishops, so he's going to take the bishop, because they like bishops. Okay, knight f6, takes. Now, which top ten grandmaster often likes knights better than bishops? He's the only one. Cover. Exactly. Yeah, Nakamura, he likes knights. And that's why he was number two in the world, and number ten. Yeah, truth hurts. Okay. Bishop h3. Rawr! I like attacking when my opponent hasn't castled yet. I like making threats. So I like it. Queen e7. Bishop g5. Finally he can do it. And now, after castles, white plays for tricks. Okay, and he, his tricks worked. Bishop f6, a move I would never think of. If my student did that, I would yell at them. Okay, but this has a very important tactical idea. You see, this, you see this action over here? And you see how that's defending that and so on? Okay, so here's the problem Black has. If he takes with the rook, he's not defending his rook, because I said so. You see what I'm saying? So then if I take on d5 and you take back, your rook's not defended. However, if you take with the queen, then your rook is defended. So Capablanca took with the queen. Now... The bishop's not defended, which it was, right? You agree. It was defended. The queen was here. So now he did it anyway. And the idea is, I'm going to play queen takes check and take the bishop. So that's why he played bishop takes f6. It was all tactics. Okay? And Capablanca's is like, those tactics don't work. I have tricks. <laughs> okay? So Capablanca played queen h6, attacking the bishop. Okay? He's like, I have tricks. And Rubenstein's like, okay, I'll defend my bishop. I really like king g2 because this, there's some action going on here. So he gets out of that pin. Now, rook d8 and Rubenstein resigned because his knight got pinned. But he got to play the world champion. That was a pretty good game. They don't believe me anymore. They know my lies, right? Okay, now, if you remember 20 minutes ago, you'll know what white played here. Raise your hand. You have to remember 20 minutes? He's like, I don't remember 20 minutes ago. Leave me alone. He does. He's like, 20 minutes ago. You. Queen C1. You remember that? Yeah, Queen C1. Same so way. I'm wondering, was my dad talking about this one or the other one? I think it was the other one, but I'm not sure. Hey, Rubenstein evidently knew how to use his queen on C1. He, he knew how to play queen. Yeah, I don't know what he meant. I'm not sure which Queen C1 he meant. Huh. I don't know which one's better. I'd have to call that man, his trademark. Man, queen c1 is a really good move. That's tricky. Okay, so obviously we're threatening the bishop, right? And the idea is if you take my knight and I trade queens, I got a little fork action here. Yeah, you agree? Yeah. He was very lucky all the tactics worked. Lucky. <laughs> right? It was all planned. Yeah. So that's pretty good. I'm guessing Capablanca saw when he... So in this position... I'm guessing Capablanca saw he could play queen takes, knight takes, queen here, 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 and he was like, all right, great. Then queen c1, he's like, aw. You with some comment. Um, uh, um, you can make a comment, it's okay. No, I'm not raising my hand. Oh, okay. I'm just stretching. So queen c1. Yeah, Rubenstein's good. Okay, so Capablanca got into this lost position. Boo. Now he's down a pawn with a worse pawn structure, but active. Rawr. Okay, queen b5, defending both pawns and attacking a pawn. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's a good move. Knight d4, threatening everything. Queen d3. So instead of taking pawns and taking pawns and taking pawns, he's like, I'm going to win the end game. And hey, important point there, though. Yeah. Right, go queen d3. Yeah. Look at that, guys. Uh, the, the e pawn is immune. If the queen takes, there goes the knight. If the knight takes, there goes the queen. How do you like that? I think white liked it. It's a little something to remember right yeah. there. The problem, 
with He's taking really the pawn, which epoch. most of you would do, is that's a very tenuous defense. Whenever I talk to Ocean, he's like, no, no, that's tenuous, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you, your, your name is the new Arjun. We, we need a Ken West. Okay, so now when I attack, when I attack your queen, your queen's going to move away from your knight, then I'm going to take your knight, right? You agree. Okay. So he took the queen. Yeah. And now I'm, I'm a pawn up. And my bishop's better than your knight because I'm a grandmaster. So I like bishops better than knights. And also, this is an open file. You guys agree, right? And then I don't think black's going to that open file. You know what I mean? No, the truth hurts. Okay, rook e8, that's an open file. Bishop g4, stopping rook e2. Rook e1, everybody's trading, everybody's happy, everybody takes everything. Bishop check. This is a really nice finish. Kappa Blanca got really tricky at the end. I like bishop f7. He's like, move your king up so I can play rook f7 check. Good idea. Yeah, now I can play rook f7 check. He's sneaky. Yeah. Okay, he did. And Kappa Blanca said, I don't care how many pawns you have, I'm going to make a queen. Okay, that, that's what he said. And Rubenstein's like, you can't talk during the game. <laughs> and see, he's trying to make a queen. Check, check. Bishop d5. He's like, I'm going to make a queen. Takes. A3, I'm going to make a queen. That's a dangerous pawn, isn't it? Yeah. Bishop takes knight. Okay. So now, obviously, if you play king takes, I play rook a5 and, and you resign. Okay. So he played rook takes b3. Now, you could also play a2, right? Because you want to make a queen. Now, I think there's more than one way to win here. I'll tell you how I would win. I would go there, and I want to go here next move. So what would you do? He would go king a6. Yeah. Now i got more than one way to win. I'm going to bet on that way. That's the way I'm going to bet. And I think rook b4 also wins. And after rook a4, take your queen. i got 7,000 pawns for your rook in a bit. So that's also good for white. Okay. So Kappa, Kappa Blanca played rook takes b3. Bishop d5. a2. Man, Kappa Blanca is good. So I think a normal person would take the rook and win a very long end game. It's got to be winning for white. I got four pawns, right? But Rubenstein decided that black not queening was a better option. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So what did he do? Uh, this is a tricky one. Yeah, this is tricky. He checked the king. He did check the king, and black has a problem now. Oh, I see if he goes... No. Yeah, you have yeah. a problem. If he goes C five, we just go over the A file. Yeah, if you go to C, if you go, if you don't protect the A file, I'm going to play Rook A six. If you go to the A file, I'm going to play Rook here and do that checking business again. A skewer. Yeah. So, so he has to go so King B five. B five is the only square that doesn't go to the A file or the C file. Right. But now. Now I go check, and then I go Rook A, and then I go Rook A six. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Captain Blank is like, hmm, no, no. no. I, I resign. Really yeah. Good. Now, yeah. if you're like, wait a minute, I'm going to stop him from playing rook a8. See? You see how you stopped him? Yeah, then I check you, and then I take your pawn. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, the truth hurts. Yeah, rook h6 was very cute. All the king moves allow the rook to get to the a file. Yeah. So after rook h6, he resigned. Now, Rubenstein's beating these guys at their best. Capablanca 1911 was good. And in the last game, Lasker was the world champion. So it's not that he beat this doofus, and it's a famous game, and he sacked all his pieces, and we all clap. He also beat the two best players in the world. Okay, And you're like, who is that guy? That guy was good. And he lived a long time, and unfortunately, I mean, he wasn't playing chess and was poor in the you know, 40s, 50s, and 60s. And his son became an expert. And I actually talked to his son a lot about, you know, like, way before any of you were born, even the ones who were older than me, still, right? Yeah. But... I mean, that guy was a great player. He beat all the best players in the world, and unfortunately, never became world champion. Now, I could be wrong. Dave Vest will correct me. What? I could be wrong. I don't think he ever played a world championship match. He never did. Yeah. No. He you can't become world champion unless you play a match. He couldn't get the money. Do you know, yeah. he does have that one variation. There's two. There's the Rubenstein in the French defense. Yep. yep. Variation. And, and, and the then the Rubenstein and the Nimzo Indian. Yeah. 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 Is that the only two he has? 
Any other room stuck variations? Was, I mean, there could be other ones. That's the two I know. Only white ones. Yeah. But, I mean, that guy was considered for many, many years the best player who never became world champion. Now you got Kerez, you got Korshnoi. You guys can argue that. I, I have no opinion. Those guys were good, too. Now, Korshnoi, he played matches for the world championship, but he was playing Karpov. Man, Karpov was good. And Kerez, you can argue, I don't know what the old guys think. To Rash. Yeah, what about him? Did he, did he ever become world champion? No. no, but he played a match, I think, didn't he? Didn't last for no, they, school? No, they... That match, they, he never played at the right moment. Yeah, well, I mean, Lasker's better than this, right? But, but um, Kieras, some people argue, he was told you're not going to be the world champion. Bafnik's the world champion. And he had to do what he was told. Yeah, I'm serious. Yeah. yeah. That don't happen now. It may happen a little. I played in a tournament with Kieras. Yeah, did you beat him? No, he beat my friend. What? Yeah. Must be it a was, former friend. After he lost to Kerry's, he's like, I don't know. Yeah. No, he was like. I actually have, I know a couple people personally who play Kerry's. He played in Canada in the yeah. 70s, the Canadian Open. That's it. That's where yeah, my see, friend, yeah, I played see, in the I, same tournament. I, I know what's up. That was yeah. my first big tournament in Vancouver. Yeah. And then after he died the next year, they called it Kerry's Memorial. Yeah, that'll happen. Yeah. So that was Akiba Rubenstein, possibly the greatest player ever to become world champion, beating world champions left and right, possibly straight, too. And I met his son Sammy in Belgium, right, and so there's some there's some connection there. And generally for the lectures, I'll be talking about not players from the 60s and 70s, but players like you know, in this era and and before. I like to lecture about Morphe, doesn't everybody? I was expecting Morphe tonight. Well, I've done a lot of I lectures on Morphe. Now, I predicted it. now Rubenstein, he was a great in-game player, correct? Yeah, he won all these end games. Yeah, he became I mean, like the last person. He game. used tactics yeah. to get his way, and then he just beat Rubenstein, you with the Rubenstein material. Rubenstein was a great end. player. That's why we have great players of the past, right? Now he's your favorite player. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I hope you enjoyed tonight's class. I hope the recordings work, and it's going to take a week or two to get on YouTube, assuming we get our act together. And if we don't, then we don't. Then only you guys can see it. Then you could beat everybody. Right? No? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. All right. And as Gene Wilder said in, in, um, in Young Frankenstein, class, class, is class is dismissed. Well, I like saying class dismissed. You, you, see, you see the scene I'm talking about? I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I can't do that because I don't have insurance. I can't. I can't stand myself in the lake. Yeah. All right. Good so job. Have you pulled this out of chess space? Um, yeah. yeah chess space. I, the, I, the, I'm using chess space. I have 6.7 million games in this database, uh, so I can just type in somebody's name, like David Vest. Uh, no, remember, I got my issues with chess space, but, but, uh, and so I'm not going to talk about it. But I'm going to ask you, all those colors that you put on there, the red and green, that's yeah, in chess, all space, chess space is? Everything's chess you space. You see that, guys? That was awesome. Do you have chess space? I could do yellow, too, but that's... You got chess space? This class hey, is hey, advanced hey, enough for you. yellow. Use so your chess space. Yeah. <laughs> all right, good job, everybody. Yeah, now, now go I buy stuff. Go, go play Brooks Chess.